So again, hits the ground at 35.8 meters per second. The total distance that it travels will be the total time that it's in the air times the horizontal velocity. Okay? So Vx times T, 17.3 meters per second, I found at the very beginning of the problem. 4.22 represents the time up plus the time down. It travels 73 meters in this direction. That's a very typical uh, projectile motion problem. In um, this case, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, we have a plane traveling at 100 meters per second, drops a rocket from a considerable height. Sort of like the, the package problem that we had before. Except for, we're going to throw a little bit of a twist here. This is not projectile motion. We're going to have it accelerate at 20 meters per second in the x direction. Now, this is a little bit different from what we have. Okay? Before, we just had acceleration downward and no acceleration in the x direction. Now we have acceleration in the x direction. Things get a little bit more difficult to, to uh, solve. All right. Here are our equations in the y direction. Kinematic equations for constant acceleration. All right? Um, we need to find out how long it takes to fall this distance. Okay? Um, again, initially it's traveling at 100 meters per second in the x direction. Initially it's going 0 meters per second in the y direction. How long does it take to fall? Uh, 1 kilometer. And how fast will it be going in the y direction after falling that distance? Again, if we find the time of fall from this equation right here, initially it's not falling. So V0, Y is 0. The time of fall to fall 1 kilometer is 14.3 seconds, assuming free fall. So this rocket will be going in its journey for 14.3 seconds. Now, um, the speed at which it falls after that will be equal to V0Y, which is 0, minus GT. So we have just minus GT left here. Fall 14.3 seconds, acceleration 9.8 meters per second squared. It's going to be falling at a rate of negative 140 meters per second. Now in the x direction, it's also accelerating. But the great thing about these problems is we can treat the x and the y direction completely independently. So this becomes a combination of a projectile motion problem and a previous chapter problem. Here are the equations for kinematic um, constant acceleration, kinematic equations for constant acceleration in the x direction. And again, it's accelerating in the x direction at not 20 meters per second squared. Um, initially, we'll have 100. It's going at 20 meters per second squared. It'll fall for 14.3 seconds. How fast is it going? After 14.3 seconds, it's going 386 meters per second. So in the end, it has this much x velocity from the rocket engine, is this much y velocity from free fall, and the total speed that it's traveled, we can calculate from the square root of the sum of the squares. Okay? It's traveling at 411 meters per second. traveling downward at an angle of nearly negative 20 degrees. All right. So again, um, probably the most illustrative problem of this uh, section is this case where we're throwing the projectile at a higher height than where it lands. Once again, really concentrate on this one here. I always start out by resolving the x and the y velocity. Once you have the x and y velocity, find out how long it takes to reach the maximum height and how high the maximum height is. Once you know where this point is and how long it took to get there, then you can do the fall part. How long does it take to fall? You can add that to the time to go up to give you the total time. How fast is it falling when it reaches this point right here? Okay. And then anything else like range um, or final velocity can be found from that. Okay? This is the one that you should really look at and understand how we get this.